uh, here at E3 uh, that we're letting people play. Um, just so everyone knows, this is uh, this is a living game. We still have a ways to go uh, to finish off the game and completely polish it. So we might see some hiccups uh, along the way, but we fully assume that we're super proud to be here to show it off. Uh, we've been working a long time on this, and and it's finally exciting to to be able to to show it and have people play it and send us feedback. So, so here we're gonna go. Carl is gonna show off his uh, skills, his gazelle <laughs> rustling his, skills, yeah. his gazelle skills. Uh, and here we're gonna start with uh, a camp. So these camps, these are military locations. Uh, he's gonna use Senu, right? That's right. Senu, Senu she's is a the, beauty. Yeah, she's a beauty. <laughs> uh, she's a great scout. Uh, so right now, Carl's using her to to tag the enemies, but also tagging opportunities in the in the camp. Now, the question might be, why would someone infiltrate such a location uh, outside of quests? So there is a quest that actually takes place here. In the demo, we've disabled the quest so that we can focus on the world and what happens with the world. Mm -hmm. Later on, there's going to be more streams with quests so that uh, we can kind of spread the, the, the love, the content. But for now, we're just kind of cutting loose in the open world and exactly. uh, going to see what is in store for us here at this camp. Now, with the tagging, uh, I'm noticing, you know, one of the new features here is that levels are popping up yep. over the enemy's heads as you are tagging. Uh, yep. So, uh, what what can the player read into those levels as to what kind of challenge they're going to face? Yeah. So, so by going a lot more action RPG, uh, what's happening here is that right now Bayek is level 20 and he's facing off against enemies that are at an equivalent challenge, mm -hmm. and so this would be considered a, a fair. You know, challenge fight in this part of the world, um, and we'll see that as uh, we'll, we'll see later on. There's another camp with enemies that are level 25, and you'll see that the feedback is slightly different. This is to really clarify to people: levels matter, gear matters. Uh, taking on higher level enemies, it's doable, mm -hmm. but they're tougher not only in stats but they're also tougher in behavior. So the higher level they are, they have more capacities, more abilities, stronger weapons. So you might want to think twice before taking them exactly. on, or get some better gear, or just light your arrows on fire, yes. apparently. What are you doing there, Carl? I think I'm going to cause a little bonfire down here. Why not? Because it's not hot enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just a little more warmth from the bonfire. Yeah. Speaking of which, my feet are on fire. We are in the middle of the yeah, sun it is, right It here. is really hot out we here. We suffer for your entertainment, <laughs> viewers. Listen, this, is the, uh, this is the live streaming <laughs> equivalent of method acting is, you know, we Hayek <laughs> is warm right now. You think that hood is like, you know, yeah. keeping him cool? That that hood is warm. And and I will say for the, oh God, for the fans line. out there who... Oh, the lion's oh, attacking the horse. Attacking the horse. He's got a snack on well, some horse meat. it is a meat. distraction. He's Not been caged up for a while. So th that's something that we fully embrace in here. So all the NPCs of the world, all the humans, all the animals, they have a full life in the world. They have needs, they have wants. Uh, animals, uh, you know, they, they hunt, they sleep, they find shade. Uh, so in this case, this lion has been captured and been put in uh, a cage. And at this point, it becomes an opportunity for the player. It, you can't always guarantee it. But um, OK, so these guys are. They sense something. Ah, they They've seen a lion getting released. <laughs> They've seen... <laughs> kind of hard to miss, that one. <laughs> yeah, a fire. There you go, Carl. Oh, something's going well down. Done. Well done. Well All right. Nice job, Carl. Thank there you. we go. So Gwyn we just picked away. up a, a bow. So this is something that's really important uh, in, uh, in Assassin's Creed Origins. It's gear. Um, oh, <gasps> Goodbye, vicious. lion. Terrible. He, was, he was so kind to you. Wow. He attacked Helping the horse. It. He should have been attacking No real horse. lions were harmed. Out of the frying pan demo. into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we picked up a bow, and we saw that it was a, it was oh a blue goodness. bow, which means that it's a common weapon. So mm -hmm. rarities do matter in this game. Yeah. Uh, the more rare uh, the equipment is, the more attributes it has, the more properties it has. So as opposed to just does, does some more damage, it cannot have other properties. Uh, like what is an example? Exactly. So, so other properties could be things like poison tipped. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, be, being able to generate adrenaline. Adrenaline is a, is a concept, uh, it's a resource in the, the combat system that allows uh, Bayek to unleash uh, a fury of attacks or, or just devastating, overpowering attacks. And you can build adrenaline through the combat system. And uh, some weapons charge differently than others, so this is part of the depth of the combat that we want players to, to mess around with. And this is a whole new combat system, you guys. Boom, headshot. It's, it's way different than the, oh. the feeling before of not sort of being an he it. He's <laughs> Take him up, poor guy, helmet. poor guy. Oh, he's... Ooh, he can cover some ground. So this guy's a commander, that's the, the gold icon. Uh-oh, not for long. There we go, there yeah. We go. Dead. 
So there we go. So killed. So here we found a Very second killed. bow. So in a military location, uh, military locations are great for finding equipment mm -hmm. uh, and new gear. Uh, aside from playing quests, these are also places to to be able to, to upgrade bike with new uh, new weapons. Loot all that. So here we found a bow. Oh, we leveled up, uh, which oh, gives us an ability point. So we'll, we'll check that out in a second. Let's check it out now. Yeah, and we found a shield. Oh, cool. Nice All right, so here we're Carl. looking at sort of the, the skill tree, and uh, I'm seeing three different yeah. branches. Yeah, it's it's more of a graph. Uh, what okay. that means is there are flavors. So on the one side, we, we, what you see here is the, the Master Seer. This is more the abilities that are aligned with uh, manipulation. Mm -hmm. So manipulating the environment, uh, animals, and uh, NPCs. Uh, in the center, we have the warrior aspect, which is really delving deep into fight. And uh, the hunter aspect, which is more the stealthy approach of being an assassin or being a ranger. And the idea is players can dedicate themselves or go through the graph however they want. That's why it's a graph, because they can actually uh, kind of spread themselves as they wish. They can really craft their own uh, their own assassin. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can even focus on one area. If you want to be the absolute ultimate warrior, yeah. The ultimate, ultimate warrior. Whoa. You can you can dedicate yourself. So the last ability on each graph, uh, you can keep pumping points into it. Uh, so you can really become that super powerful archetype that you wish to play. You just got to chase down a fluorescent outfit and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so what kind of player would you be, Ash? What's your personal favorite style? Uh, personally, well, we should we should get Carl to, to buy something here. We go for the Enhanced Warrior Bow. Enhanced Warrior Bow. The Warrior Bow is super cool. We haven't seen it yet, so maybe we should switch to it if we can. Yep. We did pick up a few new bows, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, we should yeah, check yeah, out the new gear. Check out our gear. Definitely check out the new gear. So uh, in terms of my, my style, I would I would say I'm somewhere between Hunter and Warrior. I can't choose one or the other. I sometimes prefer stealth, sometimes prefer just duking it out with the guys. Um, that's my style, but that, that's one thing we wanted to cater to is that we have a, a lot of fans who either play stealth or play uh, pure mm -hmm. combat. It depends and on the mood. we wanted to give them a control over that. Yeah. So here we can see that Carl put on a new bow. Uh, you also had a new shield. Put on the shield, put on the shield. Let's new see. everything. Wood, new bow, new is shield. Is it really going to be better? Let's have a look. Oh, it, oh, yeah. It's way better. So oh, you wow. can see the, the shield adds to, to the player's resistance. Okay. It was quite significant. And we can see it has a property, which is that um, when you block uh, a hit, you generate adrenaline. Mm -hmm. So the idea yeah. is with gear, you can actually start crafting, again, the way you fight, the way you stealth. We can see the crafting at the bottom there. Uh, so just, just like combat, there's no longer this concept that you can one-shot assassinate just anybody. Mm -hmm. Enemies that are higher level, you'll do stealth damage. But if you want to one-shot them, be that true lethal assassin, you have to craft better hidden blades. You gotta work hard at it. Or and now we're going for a little boat ride. Yeah. Just yeah, trying to cool down in the sea, which I wish I could do right now because <laughs> I am on fire. <laughs> Pretty hot. So this is the amazing <laughs> tech. Singapore has been working on the water. I think it's some of the most beautiful water in it's any gorgeous. game. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's completely seamless. You, we can at some point we'll dive underneath. For, for now, um, you know we have an island here. Let's maybe at some point explore the island. Well, this lake yeah, is really big. Yeah, can we just get a sort of look at how yeah, sure. how big this is? So great. This is one Take of the a look at this lake. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. You I'm can see the the, the the draw distance are absolutely stunning. Yeah. This is for you folks watching. This is running on the Xbox One X. Yeah. It, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it, it's really allowing us to showcase what we can push with our engine, the beauty of the world. We really want to do Egypt justice and 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 show it off. Show off our artists. Show off our, our technical uh, technical people, our programmers who who bring this to life. It's gorgeous. So here we can see some boats in the distance. This uh, this bigger ship here. There's there's always opportunities. The, the world is alive. Mm -hmm. You know, fishermen are out catching fish. They'll take their their goods to to shore, to docks, take them to the markets, go home and sleep at night. And there's always opportunities for the player here. All right, out for a little swim. And you mentioned <laughs> underwater. Uh, let's let's take a little dive. <laughs> okay, let's take sure, a little let's dive. Down. Take a look. Uh, you know, I there see something dangerous. Off in the horizon there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, what is that? It's a hippo. Oh, man, do we have other He looks creatures? pretty friendly. Let's get closer. <laughs> See what happens. It's a good idea. Very good idea. <laughs> or not. Carl has a great track record with <laughs> animals, so uh, <laughs> nothing could go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but you've, so heard, you got... you've heard about his stories from Singapore, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here, so, so Ooh, this is a location. Uh, the reason there's loot here, the question might be, why is there loot here? 
Uh, Why the reason there's here is actually this island. Um, it's uh, it's where the Ptolemies, so the the guard force, mm -hmm. they use this island as a way to uh, to stop, to take a break, to to actually refill on some of their stocks. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. And uh, so here we can see there's actually a guard on the other side who's been killed by what? I don't know, but. Maybe the hippo. Not a hippo. No, he, he's a good guy. I <laughs> think we should say a hi. Nice, nice dude. <laughs> he's a nice dude. Oh, I got a spear. You got a spear? Use the spear. Switch the spear. Okay, let's switch. Yeah, because that's the thing. We've seen sort of that uh, that short curved sword in yeah, action. The yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's there there is a variety of weapons, and the sort of the reach of the longer weapons is going to affect how you are in combat. Exactly. Uh, so so we have uh, a ton of types of weapons. So eight melee weapons, uh, four types of bows, uh, and this is just the types. Then within them, there's levels, attributes, properties, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, it's, it's a completely sim seamless system you here. We're using the bow in water. You should get in um, closer, Carl, and see what happens. Like, is those it birds, if Carl, if Carl was good, he can shoot <laughs> those birds down. I got other problems right now. Let me deal with this uh, angry beast. They're just trying to say hi. Okay. You know? I, I feel like you're engaging it on its home turf. Like, maybe they're slower on land. You don't want to. Oh, God. <laughs> and he's using the spear. Oh, no. <laughs> you're smacking the hippo with oh, your spear. Oh, man. Poor hippo. What if it's a mama? Now, you know what? Oh, now you've got Carl. him angry. He just wanted to say hi. Oh, I think boy. if it's oh, a mama, boy. Carl's in even more trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Keep circling you're, it. You're vicious, yeah. No hippos were harmed in the making of this demo. No, it's no actual hippos no were actual harmed hippos. in the making of Assassin's Creed. This Gorgeous. one's being harmed, though. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, so when you loot a hippo, what are you what are you gaining from this beast? So, <laughs> <laughs> what was the purpose of this massacre? Did you ever think he would say that sentence yeah. <laughs> in public? Uh, so animals. Uh, so, so the fauna of Egypt. Whoa. Is, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> just throw that guy off his boat. Yeah. Poor guy. Sorry. So this is. Sorry, buddy. There's a hippo just over there. Careful, huh? You can you'll, use a corpse as a float. You'll this be fine. This is Carl style. This is Carl style. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, obviously, Egypt, it's, re it's, it's very well known for its, its fauna, its, its wildlife, and we need it to represent that properly here. Um, and then we have to say, well, it matters to the player on some level. So this is part of the progression system. So you gain materials that you would use to, to craft uh, some of your gear. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so that's... <laughs> oh! oh! You're just a shit no, starter, no, aren't you, Carl? This military, it's all right. These are military dudes. Oh, <laughs> oh put, uh, put He's on fire apart. now. <laughs> okay. Ooh, oh, fire on a here. boat. That's uh, that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, the fisherman's coming in dangerously. Oh boy. Is someone else mixing it up over there? There we go. Oh, oh, oh now oh, the boat's no, on fire. It's coming for me though. He knew that his boat was in trouble. I better leave. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave him to tread water. Yeah. So you know what? If, if the situation was slightly different, I love Carl how this guy's just along for the ride. He's yeah, just in front of you, like, what chilling. is happening? Yeah. <laughs> the guy's just chilling. The thing is, Bayek is a Magi. Mm -hmm. They are protectors of Egypt. Uh, they're protectors of the, the Egyptian way of life. And Egyptians have a high respect for Magi's, and they uh. go to them for help. This is actually feeds into the questing system, actually. So, as a Magi, he respects them. He's going to mm. let them take his boat for a ride. You do you, Bayek. You do you. <laughs> Set boats on fire. I like it too because he's not like obviously the boat's important to that dude. Like it's probably his livelihood. He's like, look, man, you can you can take this wherever you want, but I'm I need it when you're done. <laughs> yeah, just be sure you bring even it back. He's chilling in one piece. for a bit. He'll even wait a bit. Eventually he'll leave, but he'll wait a bit for now. He's watching me, Kevin. So courteous. He's like, so hey, courteous. in case you need a getaway vehicle, I'm here, bro. It's exactly, cool. exactly. <laughs> So, so here, this is this is another military camp, but this one's slightly different. This one's a wharf. Uh, here, what we what we wanted to show is just what it's like to take on enemies that are much higher level. So mm -hmm. here, we'll see some guards. So there's some in the front gate there. So level 25, you see that the badge is red, which is kind of telling the player, yes, you can try. You can try. Try your best. You Take a run at him. Give it a shot. But it's going to be a very difficult fight because you're you're not at their level just yet. Eventually, with by by going through quests, by completing locations in the world, uh, you will level up enough. So I would recommend just <laughs> yeah, Carl. Trying. Carl, what's your plan here? Are you going to take yeah. on this How are you gonna challenge? Do this? Let's. Oh, this guy's. Oh, he's he looks vulnerable. So let's try a headshot. <laughs> he's alone. Let's try a headshot, see how much damage it does. Oh, goodness, it's not going to do a lot. He's going to swat a fly. Yeah, he is. Oh, he is no. tough. Yeah, oh, no. tough. Just a little scratch. Yeah. Get up on him. All right. Got this. Got the spear. Oh, Working it in close quarters. And... Come on, get him, Carl. 
Oh boy, here we go. I believe in you, Carl. You he can, can do take it. him. He can take him. Honestly, he can do it. Carl, Carl's been practicing. He's very good at the game. <laughs> oh goodness! Yeah, There's look at that one hit. A, like a stun almost happening. Is that a oh. heavy hit that I'm? Oh no! Oh. Oh, Lord. You get enough uh. for effort. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, two hits from me. <laughs> okay. So look. The game is live. This yeah, is, you know we. This we is take, real gameplay. Exactly. Yeah, we we take, uh, you know, we take games very seriously in the sense of we, you know, we want this to be the the representation of the game as it is. We want players to see where it is today. So yes, in a demo playthrough, Carl died you in front of everybody. You can get But so I've learned my lesson. You don't have that. to rub it in, Ash. <laughs> in front of everybody. I've learned my lesson, and I'll just keep moving on. The level 25 is too too high. Let's give uh, them a wide berth now, and uh, so you're coming in. You're look, sort of leaving the wharf and coming. Oh, oh hey, buddy! Yeah, so Carl our friend. called for for his mount. And does this horse have a name, yeah, or is it a horse with no name? <laughs> I believe uh, this horse is uh, named uh, Amun Ray. Amun Ray. So, He's very but, handsome. Um, or she. A beautiful horse. Yeah. Uh, so Senu is uh, is our eagle companion. Uh, in this case, though, we wanted that mounts was uh, something that the player can actually collect more and more mounts, purchase more and more mounts, and we have many different types of mounts. So there's horses, oh, no many shit. types of beautiful horses, but also camels and eventually chariots. Uh, camels. Yeah, and they all have their value. And uh, so, so you can actually have different types of horses. Uh, Senu being the, the the eagle companion that stays with you through the journey. Uh, so there we go. So we have. Uh, we have this beautiful black horse here. Does the camel black have stallion. a spit attack? Because I hear they do that. <laughs> a spit attack, no, but I, but you can rear with the horse. You can rear with the horse. The camel... Get the hooves in there. <laughs> so we're sort of skirting the shoreline here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is... You guys have built, as you were saying uh, in the presentation, this is a country, you know? This is exactly. not just one city. So what actually, kind of region are we in? Yeah, actually, before before we go in, so, so here we found uh, Umeria, which is, uh, w which is uh, a port village. Um, actually, maybe I'll ask all to, to go to the, the map. Sure. You can go to the map just to kind of give a general spacing of the world. So, so, we're, so this is the lake that we've seen with Senu. If we keep zooming out, keep zooming out, this is the, this wow. is the, the aspect Enormous. of the demo. The lake is where the demo takes place. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Since we were riding a bit north of it earlier. We started, we started around here. Yeah, yeah. That's, why, that's how we unfog the world. By visiting the world, you unfog it. But just to give a breadth of this country that we've built. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, yeah, move around just to show it's... Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. It's, it, it keeps ginormous. going. Ginormous. It's absolutely massive. Up to Alexandria in the north. Yeah, Alexandria, nice. there's the Giza Desert, the Nile Delta, the Giza Plateau, Memphis, the ancient city of Memphis, and it goes on. Then there's Fayum, uh, Crocodopolis down in the south. Crocodopolis. <laughs> yes, yes. Real what? city. I like that place, Thieves Land. Who do you? Th who, what's going on? Does anybody ever go there? Really honest it's people. Like I not. think no, daring, you don't go down. daring players should go there. <laughs> There's a lot of cool stuff in it for them. Uh, so just to give an idea that that we, you know, this is a country. Egypt is. Um, it's such a majestic setting, and we've dreamed of going to this place. And so when we started, and we decided we're going to Egypt, we we understood that it was going to be, uh, you know, a labor of love. It was gonna it was gonna push us to develop new technologies to build such a a crazy big world. And then to even populate the world with all these people that actually have agendas and purpose. Mm -hmm. For example, these, these people over here are being attracted by an event, if, if Carl would look at it. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, Egypt is hard. Egypt, uh, it was a, a tough life. Place. Let's investigate. Priest, what does the boy done to deserve this? This has nothing to do with you. Back away. The boy will get what he deserves. I serve so big. I serve so big. I am a slave. Boy, what are you accused of? I was charged with ferrying two gold sobeks to Crocodilopolis. Just out of port, my ship sank by the lighthouse. I almost drowned. The statues were lost. I didn't steal them. Silent! And you, step back, Sahedi! Wait, do not threaten me, Neb. I am a Magi. If the boy speaks the truth, I will find your gold sobeks. If he lies, he is yours to deal with. 
So here we, we got a little bit of a taste of, of Bike's personality mm -hmm. and his attitude towards these masked, masked priests that abuse their power. And this is uh, a side quest. So uh, our players can expect uh, this, this type of quality, you know, cinematics, great characters, uh, in the optional content in the side quest. And we, we have hundreds of stories to tell. Egypt was a, a really wonderful place. Then we found so much amazing stories that we wanted a way to be able to tell them, and the quest structure allowed us to do that. But Very again, cool. we're saving the quest stuff for, for other streams, for, for YouTubers out there. So uh, so for now, we'll continue with uh, playing Our through the world. Our open world shenanigans. Yeah, uh, if you folks are just joining us, we're playing Assassin's Creed Origins on the Xbox One X uh, with Ash and Carl from the uh, Assassin's Creed Origins dev team. I'm Chris, this is Hanny, and uh, we'll be doing this for about 10 more minutes, so stick around. We've got plenty of open world uh, stuff to show you and some explorations here as Senu scouts out some more locations. So, She's a good girl. So here, actually, I'm going to ask Carl to not stealth this one. Uh, uh, the reason we're showing these different locations, different camps and warps, is actually we wanted to show a bit of stealth, we want to show a bit of fight, so I'm going to ask Carl all right, well, to, what, what do we got in our arsenal here? He Can needs to <laughs> earn some redemption. Oh, yeah, OK. He needs to this earn time redemption. with this uh, one, Carl. Okay, okay, let's give it a try. For the okay, last. here I come, out the bushes. Are you going in with the spear? Uh, I'll just shoot him in the chest first to wake him up. <laughs> Good wake up call. There we go. Wake nice. Up. OK, all right, all right. Nice dodge. Come on, call. Redeem yourself. Boom. Nice job so far. At some point, yes. just to show the, the One more the, hit, and he's dead. <laughs> the yes. versatility yes. of the fight. We can, you can take out your bow. There we go, dynamically in the nice. fight. Headshot. Oh, oh my God, that's Bravo, huge. bravo. All right, now, is he close to filling up his adrenaline oh, meter here? Yes. He seems like that it's, might be it's, helpful. It's getting there, it's getting there. I'll try and use it on the big dude. Hey, he is humongous. There we go. Okay, just just get in there, unleash. There we go. Okay. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay, here we go. We're going to see Carl. Uh oh Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Fish, nice. Fish Impaled. Very good, very good. <laughs> that was. Oh, you done good, Carl. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, Through the throat that time. Nice. <laughs> nice job, Carl. You <laughs> killed thank it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, give us a little broader context. Who are these dudes that Bayek is uh, dispatching with such yeah. a mash? So, so this is. We're, we're in, the, in the era of the Ptolemies. So these are Ptolemaic guards. Um, they, they work for the people that Bayek is, is, is going after. And when I say going after, effectively, Bayek is unraveling a mystery. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know who, who these characters are that he's after. And so he comes to this place. He's actually looking for a contact to gain some info to lead him to eventually uh, his targets. And these are the Ptolemy guards who, f who work for these people. Uh, Bayek, being an, an Egyptian, uh, uh, a Magi, mm -hmm. he doesn't have a very good alignment with these people. Uh, I'll they represent, say. Uh, yes, <laughs> they represent really uh, like the evil forces that are destroying his homeland. Uh, so, it's anyway, so uh, these are the people he's after. This area of the world, just to say, if we take a look around, yeah, Carl, this is a beautiful shot Let's of the, give, the world. Carl, give us a slow pan here. So yeah. this is this is well, the actually, there's, a, there's a reach high point, so we can get a better view from there. Yeah, so All we're right. going to do a, a viewpoint. A viewpoint. We'll do now the viewpoint. Just for a sec, we're seeing, uh, you know, some serious climbing here. A hallmark of the Assassin's Creed franchise, but that rock didn't have any, like, obvious hand holds on it. Like, what's the approach to climbing in Origins? Uh, so the climbing, actually, before before we, we synchronize, just to look around. So pretty. Uh, so the climbing in Origins, it's... Um, uh, so, so first, we've revamped the controls. Uh, the fluidity of the character. Uh, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback already from the people who've played the build that, that feel like the assassin is really responsive, listening to them, doing what they want. Mm -hmm. And we pushed that to the climbing where we said, you know what, uh, we should be able to climb any surface we want. So, so we've created a tech for, for, for bike when he's climbing to be able to put his hands and footholds into crevices and so on on any surface. Uh, so effectively to be able to climb anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted, you know, uh, as, as the most seamless experience that we can have. Here you can see the world is absolutely beautiful. See that all, that distance, that top peak in the distance? You know, we could just go there at some point if we wish to. Uh, swimming, by boat, by camel, whatever. And, Funny, and there's three. secrets up there for us. There's really I cool love stuff. secrets. There's really cool <laughs> discoveries um, to find. Here, why don't, why don't we synchronize? So here, the world is, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, kudos to our artists, our engineers. Our technical so artists, um, you know, this this world is something. Absolutely, and you know, so synchronizing, you know, historically is sort of a way to learn more about an area, sort of clear the fog from an area. Yeah. But you mentioned earlier, 
the fog clears by you just you just traveling through the area. Yeah, uh, exactly. So we wanted to keep the idea of the we wanted to keep the the viewpoints mm -hmm. uh, as an homage to to the series. Leap uh, of faith, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Maybe we can explore a bit, walk through the yeah. area a little bit, just to give a flavor of the the village life. Villages are great places to to pick up quests, mm -hmm. to to go to shops, to uh, and, and obviously there are many quests inside villages. Uh, these are hubs of content. Um, but anyway, so oh, we're actually we're in a red zone right now. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, well, now the village life. The fleeing technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd, I'd recommend fleeing, maybe. Or you can fight. Or you can fight. He's feeling strong from his last encounter. Yeah. Yep. He's digging that. Spirit. Real confident. Mixing, uh, melee and now we're ranged. sort of we're busting out the warrior's bow here. That was a skill we unlocked earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good point, yeah. good switch, point. Switch the warrior bow. So the warrior bow, it's effectively oh, our, shit. Yeah, our shotgun bow. <laughs> He shoots five arrows at once. There we go. Oh Boom. my god, uh, deadly. Bravo. Beautiful. Very efficient. It shoots five arrows at once. Uh, so when we talk about attributes and properties, you can actually find bows that you can actually have more arrows on them. You can set them on fire by default. Mm -hmm. um, so this this actual this compound here, it's actually part of, uh, part of a quest. Uh, don't want to ruin the quest for people, but this is somebody's home that's been, uh, let's say, uh, confiscated. And uh, Bayek will eventually uh, have to have to help those people. Oh, it's a porcupine. That's a, <laughs> that's a lot of arrows. But you can recover. It looks like you're recovering yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You can pick up your arrows. Uh, that, that and that ranged that combat, that with? focus on sort of, uh, you know, assassins have had ranged weapons in the past before, yeah. but with the bows in Origins, you guys are really trying to expand that. Yeah, yeah. We, we, it, it's a, it's a full-blown third-person shooter on that element. It's, um, we, we really wanted that the play styles we push so range combat, melee, stealth, that this stuff uh, feels authentic. And if you just want to focus on that, that the game will fully support it and will go deep into that. So, so we've really pushed ourselves to, to develop these gameplays. Uh, the shooting feels great. The bows feel amazing. Uh, and there's a bunch of bows we haven't shown. There's the predator bow, which is kind of like a sniper. Uh, a little can kitty. we talk about yes, the cat? There's a little oh my kitty. god, there's, there's a cat! cat. There's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a great way to wrap this up. Like, we just saw a cat in ancient Egypt. Come in on, ancient guys. Egypt, more, and, and you know what? Want. Cats are very important can in ancient Egypt. Can you pet it? So, so here, look. <laughs> so see? Okay, look. So systemically, you know, as I said, animals really oh. live in this world. Oh mm -hmm. And so this cat has, for some reason, an affection towards bias. He loves you. <laughs> or she. <laughs> or she's sticking around. Reciprocate. Oh, look at, oh look at She loves them. She loves them. <laughs> Car as, as I said, we've, yeah. we've put a lot of effort on, on animals and their needs and what they do in the world. <laughs> yeah. I love that she appeared near the end of this stream. This it's is amazing. Fantastic yeah. moment. This yes. Cool. Ash, this has been so great. Carl, thank you for showing off the game. Uh, there's a lot more to come this yeah. week, and uh, but it must be really exciting for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a long journey for us. It's absolutely wonderful to, to be able to show off the game and, and have people play it, get their feedback. Uh, see their excitement. Uh, I'm super, super proud of the team and and w what we've achieved. Um, kudos to to the Singapore team, to the Montreal team, to all the all the teams that are working on this game, uh, all over the world. With many people supporting us. Um, it's it's a really wonderful, exciting time for us, and I can't wait for our, our fans to to play this. Absolutely, and they'll get to play it uh, at E3 here, but yes. uh, later this year, October 27th is October, the release date. Yes, October 27th, so October 27th on PS4 Pro, PS4, Xbox, PC, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, a launch title for Xbox One X. Fantastic. Well, if you folks want more Assassin's Creed Origins here at E3, there's going to be streams. Keep it tuned to Ubisoft's social channels to find out when and where those are. If you want more Assassin's Creed right now, you can head to the Ubisoft YouTube channel and check out the behind-the-scenes video from the UB blog. And uh, for all the awesome games here revealed during that incredible conference, yeah. Ubisoft.com, that's where it's at. So on behalf of Hanny, Carl, Ash, I'm Chris Waters, thanking all of you for watching, and have a great week. Peace. Thank you. Have a great E3.